Corporate Finance Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem related to leverage analysis, looking at different scenarios and considering the leverage analysis related to them. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in Excel. We have our information on the left-hand side. We're going to put that into the blue area into our worksheet on the right-hand side. So our information includes, we have the assets at the $12 million. We have financed those assets with debt and, and uh, common stock, debt and equity. That's basically being our accounting equation. Assets at the $12 million, debt at the six and then the common stock or equity at the six. So we've got assets at 12, liability six, common stock six. That's going to be your accounting equation. The debt at the six million is going to be financed at a rate of 11.5% uh, interest rate. The common stock has a par value of $9. We're going to have a um, options that we're going to be going forward with and we'll do our analysis, our leverage analysis as we look at these options. We have the debt focused uh, option and the uh, equity focused option that we'll be looking into as we look at a few different scenarios for them. We're going to say that the return on assets before interest and taxes return on assets is going to be 11.5% tax rate is going to be 30%. Now if there's a loss like a tax loss, we're going to say that the pr provision apply the loss carryover will apply therefore you can carry over the loss. So we're going to make that assumption uh, in the case that we have a, a loss in terms of taxes. So then we have the plan debt focus. So the debt focus plan, we, we're going to say we have long term debt, the amount of 2980000 that we're going to take out at 12% interest rate. And then we're going to use that money that we take out the nine million uh, two nine hundred two million nine hundred and eighty, And then we're going to use it to uh, buy back our own stock. And in so doing, then, then we're going to focus more on we'll have more debt as compared to the equity for our financing of the assets. So in other words, this this amount times the nine dollars is going to be our um, debt that we're going to take out. We're going to buy those stocks back. Also note that we're going to assume at the start that the price here to buy them back is equivalent to the par value up top. So then we have the plan equity focus. So the equity focus plan, we're going to issue the same amount of shares here as we would up top at the $9 price. And then the proceeds are then used to reduce the long term debt. So in this case, we're going to take those proceeds and reduce the debt with it. And you can see that'll focus more on the equity side of things. So we'll be financing our assets more on the equity and lowering the debt. So we're going to be leveraging going more towards the the ec the loan or the debt in the first option. And then the second option will be moving more towards the equity to finance the assets. So let's start up uh, up top, we're going to be looking at our income statement starting with the earnings before interest and taxes, that's going to be our starting point, which is kind of like the bottom line of the income statement before we get to the interest and the taxes, which, which is where the differential component will be in our scenarios here. So we got the bottom line of the income statement before we consider the interest and taxes, we're going to be picking this up by using our return on uh, asset before interest and taxes our turnover here this is our our return on assets so we have the assets of the 12 million the return on assets we're going to say are 11.5 therefore we're going to have our earnings before interest and taxes the 12 million times the 11.5 now i'd like to copy and paste some of these scenarios down below so when i pick this information up from our data to the left I'm going to try to make it an absolute reference so that when I copy and paste it down to our next scenario, we can then uh, move it down easily. So I'm going to select F4 here to make it an absolute reference. I'm going to select F4 here to make it an absolute reference there as well. And then I'm going to say enter. Now here I can copy this across because I have made them absolute references. So I can right click on this and paste it here. It's going to be the same for the debt. Or you can just say equals and then pick up the first one as well which is what i typically will do so it's all tied in there that means that all i need to do is change this number or the data in order to make any adjustments that we want to do for our analysis so then we're going to say that the interest that we'll have we're going to start off with the original uh component or the original place that we were at is just simply going to be the debt focus the six million times the 11.5 percent so that's going to give us the 690 let's put an underline there home tab font group and then the underline then we're going to have the earnings before taxes earnings before taxes is going to be equal to the the earnings before interest and taxes and that's going to be minus the interest we're going to get the 690 then we're going to apply out the taxes so then we're going to pick up the taxes 
and the taxes are at that 30%. So it's going to be equal to the 690 times the 30% down here. We're going to be picking up the 30%. And that's going to be the 207. Let's put an underline there. We're going to go to the Home Tab Font Group and underline. And then we have the earnings after the taxes. Earnings after the taxes, which is going to be equal to the 690 minus the 207. That's going to be the 483,000. Now we can take a look at our earnings per share. So let's consider our earnings per share by thinking about the number of stocks that are out there. And it said we had the total amount is this and, and nine was the par value. So if I divide that out, that'll give us the number of shares. So we have the common stock was 6 million divided by nine. We have about, and this could be some rounding here that we could have involved. So it's about uh, that. <laughs> and then we're going to say the earnings per share EPS then is going to be and remember when we think about these shares that's how many shares are basically outstanding that so it doesn't mean there's that many uh, shareholders someone could obviously people could have multiple shares but that's how many units of shares that are out there let's divide this out now we're going to say then we have the earnings divided by the shares and there's and we get one i'm going to go home tab font group add a few decimals we could keep going i'm going to stop at two so we're about uh, 0.72 so if we look at the earnings per share starting off we're about 0.72 now uh, or 72 percent per share so now let's see what the effect will be if we were to do the debt financing plan down here so we're going to say okay now let's take out a loan of this 2,980,000 at the 12 percent and then we're going to buy back some of the shares that'll lower this amount of shares that we have here and it's going to increase then of course the debt so what's going to happen to then the debt? We can think about the interest. And let's make a little worksheet to the right to figure this interest amount. So we have a little table over here and you should have that on yours now. We're going to say that uh, let's start off with the beginning debt that we started with. The debt was starting at this uh, 6 million. And then we had a rate, an interest rate, which is going to be equal to the 111.5. Let's make that a percent. Go into the home tab numbers percentifying it and then adding some decimals let's put an underline in it while we're here home tab font group and underline that's going to be the interest on the original debt i'm going to pull that into the outer column so the interest on the original debt is going to be that six million uh, times the 11.5 percent and then we got the new debt the new debt there's no g in debt uh for some there's a b i don't know why that's there either but whatever there's a b in it so that's going to be uh the 200 2 million 980 and we now have the rate on the new debt which is going to be equal to now this 12 percent i'm going to use the same formatting as this cell up, up top so i'm going to go to the home tab uh, clipboard format paint that over here to get that underline and the rate and that's going to be the uh, interest rate. So let's say interest rate on the new debt. So we're going to say actually this is interest. Let's just say interest for the new debt. And then that's going to be equal to the nine million or two million nine eighty times the twelve percent. So then we got the total interest now at equals the sum of these two items. That's going to be the total interest. Let's put an underline here. Go into the home tab font group and underline and then we're going to be picking that up then in the interest line this is going to be equal to the 1,047,600 let's put an underline here home tab font group and underline so we'll subtract this out then this is going to be equal to the earnings before interest and taxes minus the interest that's going to give us our earnings before taxes then we'll calculate the tax rate on this the tax rate is going to be equal to uh we're going to pick up the earnings before taxes times the tax rate which is going to be the 30%. And then we'll subtract this out. This is going to be equal to the 3324 minus the 99720. That's going to be the earnings after taxes. Now we're going to be considering the uh, number of shares that are going to be outstanding. So remember what happened here is they took this money and then they purchased back on the stock market the shares, reducing the amount of shares that will be outstanding, which is going and so they purchased back then this 331,111 about shares because we're saying the price was $9. So they purchased these back. So that's going to, so what we're going to say is we're going to say, we're going to say that we had, this is what we had before in shares minus what was purchased back, the 331,111. These are rounded. There could be rounding here. So now we have about 
only the 335 556 shares outstanding so we have less shares outstanding however we also have a much less uh, earnings after taxes uh, due to the fact that we increased the interest rate in order to buy back the shares so what's going to be the effect then on the earnings per share each individual unit it's going to be equal to the earnings after the taxes divided by the common shares and then let's add some decimals home tab numbers adding a couple decimals there we have it now let's take a look at the next option where we're going to say all right what if instead we go to the equity side of things and we issue shares the same amount of shares that we did up top the 331111 at the price of the nine dollars and then we use those proceeds then to pay down some of the debt so now we're going to finance more with the equity and pay pay down some of the debt what will be the effect on the earnings per share all right so if we do that then we're going to be paying down some of the debt so i'm going to actually build a little worksheet over here we'll calculate this we're going to say that the beginning debt was this uh six million then we're going to pay down some of the debt how much are we going to pay down it's going to be equal to the uh 331111 shares times uh the sales price per share that we're going to be issuing these shares we're going to get those proceeds we're going to use them to pay down uh some of the current debt so therefore the debt is at the six million minus what we're going to pay down so here's the new balance and let's go ahead and un underline here home tab font group underline and then we're going to say the rate the rate is going to be equal to the 11.5 let's make that the 11.5 home tab numbers group percent uh add a couple decimals here let's underline it home tab font group underline so then the interest is going to be equal to the 3 million uh 20 000 times the 11.5 let's go ahead and un make this blue i'm going to right click on it and we'll make that blue and put some borders around it okay so then that's going to be our interest amount we could do that with a formula here too as well but i'll just make this little worksheet then we'll pick it up from our worksheet we'll subtract this out then this is going to be equal to the earnings before interest and taxes minus the interest giving us the earnings before taxes underline home tab font group underline then we're going to calculate the taxes which is going to be this one million thirty two seven times and then we're going to say the tax rate is the 30 percent picking up then the 30 percent let's put an underline here home tab font group and underline let's subtract these two out this equals the 1,032,7 minus the 309,810 and then we could figure out the number of shares that are now going to be outstanding and so now we issued another uh 331 111 shares about so we have more shares outstanding now so before we had let's say before we had this number of shares outstanding the 666 667 plus now we're going to have this 331 111 and that then is going to be equal to more shares so now we have a lot more shares to spread the, the income over but of course the earnings before uh tax or earnings after taxes is larger now uh, due, due to the fact that we financed it basically with the equity as opposed to the debt uh, but we got to spread those out over the more shares that were issued so now the 722890 divided by the number of shares let's make that a decimal or add some decimal points home tab number group add a few decimals that's going to give us the 0.72 or 72 cents on that side as well as so that's the same that we saw at the beginning so you'll see what happened here um the middle column is going to be the worst option in terms of the earnings per share at this point in time and we'll see what will happen when we make some some changes in the future now you'll note that these two items basically remain the same where we started at and then the equity focus that's because the uh, amount of financing here is the same as the return on assets before interest and taxes and then the debt uh went down because of basically negative leverage that happened here because the rate went from 11.5 and then it's up to the 12 percent uh which resulted in some kind of uh, some negative leverage with regards to the debt focus so on an earnings per share standpoint then we resulted in a lower amount for the debt plan as opposed to the equity plan which is the same at which results in the same bottom line for the earnings per share as our original standpoint now we're going to do a couple different scenarios on this uh and we'll next one's going to be to calculate earnings per share if the return on assets before interest and taxes was 
5.75 as opposed to what we started with which was the 11.5 and then we'll move on to a couple other uh, scenarios so uh, we'll we'll continue with this next time.